Hello, welcome to another Blender video. So today I'm going to be showing everyone, you guys, how uh, some techniques to speed up your workflow. I'm just going to be going down a laundry list, but a lot of the stuff is pretty useful. So the first one is pretty simple, but I am going to be going into detail about it. And that's just adding edge loops and manipulating edge loops. So we simply go into object mode here. And the shortcut for adding an edge loop is Control R. And as you can see, you can add it into uh, several different orientations. As long as the object is well formed, um, it should give you the option to add the edge loops. So you can use the scroll wheel to add or decrease the amount of edge loops. And then after that, it'll let you move them up or down. If you press shift, it, um, scroll, uh, it slows down the rate at which uh, you can add them. So that lets you kind of fine tune it a bit. Okay. And then here it also lets, uh, lets you add edge loops going the other way. So now we have edge loops, uh, going all around the cube here. Um, if you open up this menu, it tells you the number of cuts that were made, um, the fall off smoothness and all of that. Okay. So the next thing is choosing the shortest path. So let's say I wanted to choose the, if I wanted to select the entire edge loop, I'd, help, I'd hold Alt and click it, and that's going to automatically detect the edge loop as long as the geometry is well formed. But let's say, I didn't want, let's say I didn't want the whole edge loop, but I wanted everything up until here. If you hold Control and click, it's going to pick the shortest path. So as you can see, um, it found out that the shortest path was uh, just straight up, which is basically what we wanted. Here I can do the same thing. Here the shortest path is across this side of the cube. But if I go here and then, let's see, that's an no row. If I go over here, then you can see now it's coming at it from the other side because you figured that was the shortest path. So this is really useful if you want to select um, an edge loop or it's actually more useful if, let's say this, sometimes this won't work because um, the mesh has something going on with it and it's the edge loops aren't formed nicely. This can often save you a lot of time just by using this control control click function and picking the shortest path. Okay. Next is proportional editing. Um, so this is a really useful way of making like quick general purpose edits to the mesh. All, and all it is, it's this button and you've got several different fall offs to choose from. So smooth, basically the way these fall offs work is you can think of it as uh, if you are raising it from like a plane surface, like a planar surface, this is what the shape looks like. So you can see here when I uh, raise it from a planar surface, this uh, slope kind of looks like this. And let's see some of the other ones. This should look like a sphere and it does. Uh, this looks like a root. And so these are useful for a lot of different things. Inverse square is a little bit uh, similar to the sphere, but somewhat different. Finally, random is a really can be useful for making the terrain. Um, if this was a lot more high poly, you could think of the, you could just like drag it up and you get some like hills, valleys, stuff like that. It's kind of useful. Uh, so that's proportional editing. Grow selection. So grow selection, uh, I'm pretty sure you need a numpad for this. Numpad is very useful for Blender. If you don't have a numpad, you can go to edit preferences and under input, you can select emulate numpad. So then this works. But uh, with that, uh, let's pretend we don't have, let's pretend we do have a numpad. Again, if you don't have a numpad, you can select emulate numpad and this should all work for you. So on the numpad, there's a big plus all the way on the right side of your keyboard, usually above the enter key. If you hold control and press the plus, it grows the selection from whatever the vertex is. This is super useful for just uh, selecting stuff. Um, and the, the neat thing about this is let's say we do something kind of dumb and add like a cube here, right? And let's say we just, Okay, turn off proportional editing. So now this cube is part of the same object. And let's say uh, we were like, okay, um, I want to get this cube out of here. But so what you'd have to do is if you want to select the whole thing, you'd probably have to go into wireframe and you circle select. But as you can see, I'm selecting the other cube. So gross selection is really useful in that I can just select this cube, hold control, hold plus, and it's going to highlight it's going to grow the selection, but it won't jump across uh, unconnected vertices. So now I can press G to get this out of here. And then finally, you can use P to separate an object. And if I select by selection, 
it's going to move these into two different objects. And you can see now they're two different objects, and they're even two different objects in the hierarchy. Okay, so delete this, move this back. So that's really useful. Another useful tool, um, especially if you're working with UVs, is uh, Control L. So I'm just going to unwrap this real quick. Okay, and I'm going to add a seam here. Okay, so you mark seam, and then if I unwrap this again, now we can see that, um, oops, we can see that this is its own seam right now, right? Now, uh, let's say you only wanted to select this uh, face. If you wanted to select it really quickly, you can do control L. And what control L is, I think of it as selecting linked. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a select linked L. And as you can see, depending on what the seam is, um, it'll select only this face. So if you're working with UVs and you just want to select something real quick, select like a face, control L will do that. Um, and it works similarly here. If I select the cube over here and I press control L, boom, you've got the same face. And keep in mind that I have UV sync selection on. So uh, you also need to turn that on in order for this to work properly. Oh, that's a really cool pattern here. Okay, um, next thing is, okay, uh, so let's talk about changing the center of an object. It's kind of a pain, but um, this is one of the ways I've found doing it. It's a couple of steps, but it's still workable. So let's say I wanted to put uh, my um, selection right here. So the first thing I do here is uh, select both of these vertices. And if you right click it, let's go to edge selection and click subdivide. Now we've got a vertex right in the center. Now what we can do here is we can move our 3D cursor to that um, new vertex by clicking it and using shift S. And then we simply do cursor to active and that's going to move the 3d cursor right on that active vertex now all you have to do is go back into object mode uh click on object up here and then set origin origin to 3d cursor and now you can see that our origin is on that um, 3d cursor so when we rotate it it's going to rotate about the origin okay so now um Let's clean up this vertex because we don't we don't really want this vertex to just stay here. And it's also going to launch us into our next tip. So what you want to do here is select the vertex you want to get rid of, then shift select another vertex. Now using the Alt M shortcut, you're going to get this merge menu. And again, that's Alt and M. And all you have to do is do so in this case, the vertex that we want to keep is our second picked vertex. So we pick at last. And the other vertex is no longer there. This edge is now um, complete. And for example, we can also do something like merge at center if you want. And that's just going to merge it at the center here. And yeah, there's uh, merge at first, which is going to merge at the first selection and also merge at cursor. And so our next tip here is going to be um, joining vertices. So the easiest way to do this is just by pressing J. J connects those two vertices. And you can see um, it's not creating any duplicate faces because when I drag this up, you can see that um, this edge is really attached to this face. Because sometimes you can get problems where um, it's a false edge. And you will get that problem, I believe, if instead of pressing J, you, you can also press F, which will, it'll create a new edge, but check this out. When I drag this edge up, see that? It, that edge is not connected to the face. You can see the face is still complete because um, I did it using F. So don't use F to join vertices. Use J because you can see when I use J here and I select the edge, I mean, I select the face, the face is properly split. Okay, um, we're almost done. So another tip is the circle select, which is a great tool. C circle select lets you quickly uh, select a bunch of uh, faces or vertices or edges. And the way it works is you just press C you can use the scroll wheel to increase or decrease your selection. And left click and select. And uh, if you use the middle mouse button and click it in, it's going to quickly deselect. This is useful in a variety of situations where you just want to, for example, if I just want to get this top face, I can roughly select it there. And using the middle mouse button, I can unselect anything that I accidentally over selected. 
and it's really easy for just um, selecting and cleaning up. I, I, the only thing with circle select is you have to make sure to use the escape key to get out of circle select. Otherwise, it can lock you in there if you don't know that. So use the escape key. Okay, and another easy, another um, good tip is the period focus. So sometimes you'll notice if, um, let's say I scale this down really small and I try to zoom in on it. It kind of, um, sometimes you'll have trouble zooming in on something like it won't zoom in enough or it'll zoom in too much. Usually this happens when you manipulate the scale of something a lot. In this case, it's doing a pretty good job, but uh, if you do have that problem, if you all, again, all you need to do is on the numpad, use period. And period will frame up on it um, really nicely like that. And it'll frame up on it such as that when you uh, zoom in and zoom out, it's going to do a nice rate of zooming in and zooming out. That brings us to our next tip. Sometimes when you um, zoom in on something, you'll go through it. Um, you know, the, oh yeah, for example, here, this is exactly the zoom issue I was talking about. I can't zoom in more than this, so if I use period, it'll readjust it. Another issue is you can clip into stuff with the camera, and you can change that, I believe, by... Yeah, if you go in the view menu, you'll see that the clip start is at 0 0.1 meters. So if I go into 0 0.1 meters, um, too close to something, it's going to cut through it. And I think if I make this really small, I can show you what I mean. Yeah, there we go. So now because this is such a small object, when I try to zoom in, it's going through the clipping distance of the camera. So if you are working with something really small and you don't want to clip through it, you can change this clip start to 0 0.001 or something. And you'll notice that that clipping is gone un unless I like make it a lot smaller and I try to do the same thing. Again, I'm using, yeah, now the clipping's back. But that's going to fix the issue unless, again, you decide to change the scale again. Okay, the last thing is sometimes you'll be extruding something, such as a cylinder. And you'll notice that when you extrude it, if you ever decide to rotate it, it's kind of it's kind of going to break your extrusion. So let's say I extrude the cylinder. Okay, everything's all fine. Let's say now let's say I rotate it like this. Um, if I extrude again here, what you're going to notice is that if you press extrude once, it's going to automatically detect that you're extruding along the normal. But if you press uh, if I press Z against, it's going to do the local Z. So it's switching from the local to the global to the normal. So again, that's in the top left corner. Right now it's normal, so it automatically detects um, the direction normal to the face. If you press Z again, it's gonna be the local Z. So that's the object's local Z. And if you press Z again, two times, that's gonna switch to the global Z, which is the world Z. Now, if I rotate this uh, cube a bit, like um, in the Y location, Let's see, let's try extruding again. Now, uh, again, so the first time is normal, then you get local. And now this time, because I rotated the cube, you'll see that the normal has actually spun. And if you press two, if you press Z two more times, it's going to take you to the global Z. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, and yeah, I think that brings us to the end of our quick video. I know I went really fast there, but I was trying to get through a lot. And I know that if you're working and you're looking for something that it can be frustrating when someone's going too slow. So I tried to keep it pretty fast and that's all. Thanks for watching.